Good day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Right, Sunday sort of lunchtime here in Australia. <laughs> wow, what a retracement. Now we are down to 2.3 trillion. I mean, we got up to 3 trillion, dipped to 2.5, got back up to 2.7, dropped back down to 2.5, and now we're down to 2.34 trillion dollars. It definitely feels like we could be actually in a bear market. But there's also some hopium on the horizon and yeah, I mean, we'll have a look, but things are looking dicey at the moment. Bitcoin dominance continues to drop though, which is a little bit odd because usually that is the biggest gainer in a bear market. Everyone gets out of the altcoins, but people aren't completely sold yet. There is some volume though, again, and that's what gives me some sort of comfort is, you know, $1.42 trillion has come into the market in the last 24 hours. Bitcoin price, again, under 50,000. It's been lower, it's been higher, and gas prices are at some of the cheapest prices we've seen in a little while. Now, it looks pretty bearish. I mean, it, it doesn't just look bearish, it is bearish, it's a bloodbath. But some coins have done remarkably well. So Luna has continued to pump. There's always outliers, but again, there has been volume. So the dips being bought, but also people are panic selling at the moment. and. You know, I can't tell people what to do. I never would. I won't offer you financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor. I have zero qualifications to do that kind of stuff, but I can give you my personal opinion and that's what I will do, but we'll get to that shortly. All right, again, bit of a bloodbath, 6.4%, uh, a lot of selling off, but we can see at least Luna's done well, but what else has done well? Has anything else done well other than <laughs> USDT? Stable coins will probably do all right at the moment. A lot of people will be panicking and getting into stable coins. Well, Luna's led the way with a near 20% rise. It had a dip though, but look, it just rebounded straight away. 11% uh, uh, in Leo coin. Look, Gala has had a good comeback straight away. Uh, render token doing all right. So there's definitely coins that have bounced back. Not a lot though. And these, again, are generally just the exception to the rule. These could absolutely dump tomorrow. We're still trying to find out exactly what might be going on with the market. But look, there's your couple of gainers. And look, Luna just went up from 19% to 20%. So doing well. I'd be careful that that still doesn't turn around and tank a bit tomorrow and not tank because that's all still going to be dependent on what Bitcoin does in all fairness. But what's done not so well then considering how big the market is down, I reckon there's going to be some pretty horrible ones. Oof, EOS, there we go, 16%. Now the, the dips aren't as big as the gains, but there's just more of them. ICP getting absolutely hammered. It's scary to think this was 400 and something dollars once upon a time, and now it's down to $30. I mean, you know, people just got absolutely wrecked by that, and that's uh, unfortunate. I'm glad I didn't buy it because I was considering buying it, but I just heard a few things that I didn't like about it, and I'm glad that I didn't. But down, look, 16%. Nexo, 15%. Decred, nearly 15 Theta, nearly 15 Quantum, nearly 15 Dash, nearly 15 One inch, you know, closer to 14 Filecoin, down 14%. Uni, down 13%. Chili's down sort of 13 and a bit percent. So, I mean, big double digit losses, you know, right across the board. I mean, look, they're still going, still going. You got to get down to coin 37 in losses before you get into the single digits and then there's still plenty of high single digit losses so the losses are fairly substantial at the moment so again what we need to consider is particularly if we look at this is it going to show a chart no it's not going to show a chart but again we basically went up to 3 trillion came down to uh, 2.5 trillion went up to 2.7 trillion and now we're down to 2.3 trillion so it definitely is looking bearish at the moment when you consider it like that let's go um, no that's gainers I wanted a chart but that's alright we can just look at Bitcoin chart it'll still really give us uh, an idea of uh, where things are so I did this the other day. I only had these two in, but I did say that I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin didn't come down into the kind of 36, 35-ish thousand dollar range. Now, the scary thing is it could come a little bit lower. Now, look, 
This one got filled and this one even just got touched. And look at this chart at the moment. I mean, you know, it's on a knife's edge at the moment. We're still waiting for Sunday stateside time to see what happens. But I wouldn't be surprised if we got a bit of a indecision candle like this. So there's a very small body to it and it wicks a little bit to the upside and the downside. Semi like a spinning top kind of thing. Something more like a little bit like this over here. Just indecision because I don't think the market knows exactly what it wants to do. But the scary part is... So again, this is where I was thinking it could come down to. So that's 37,000 down to around about, what do we got there? 35,000. This is what worries me a little bit. Here's a CME gap that is yet to be filled. And it is at 34,240, thereabouts. I mean, again, you know, you can lift this up just a little bit we can go up to around about sorry let's get there so that's what is that 34,510 going all the way down to 33,000 basically 33,000 sort of flat you could say so there is a CME gap there that may drag everything down. All the other CME gaps have generally been closed. Look again, there's even this one down here, but that one kind of got closed a while ago here. But the scary part is if that doesn't fill, and if we do get down to here, I mean, it's a worry already, I think that then we're definitely gonna get dragged down to here. And this is where the next CME gap is. And it is around about 26,470. And that will be quite scary because I mean, well, it just will be scary. I don't know what else to say. So that is what I'm looking at. But I'm not really so sure we're going to come down to there. So we're back to the Bitcoin chart. The fact that we had this huge wick that got pushed down into the 40s, but then it just got bought up so aggressively as well. So I'm not sold that we're actually going to go much lower. That's not to say we can't go lower. I just don't think we are. But again, as I've said, I'm never offering you financial advice and you should never take just one person's opinion. You gotta go out and read a whole stack of articles. You know, have a look at charts like this and make your own mind up. You know, watch some other people on YouTube who've been around for a long time and are considered smart. Again, you know, I can't tell you who to you know, who to watch. I can tell you who I like to watch. Uh, Invest Answers, pretty smart guy. I like his stuff. I don't take it as gospel though, but I definitely like his stuff. Data Dash, I really like his stuff. He's a very smart guy who's been around for a long time. So they're two people that I watch their videos fairly regularly. You know, sometimes I watch a lot of videos, sometimes I watch hardly any, depending on sort of what's going on. And then again, Twitter, Tech Dev, Will Clemente, you know, there's Plan B, there's a whole stack of people. And it's from all of that information that I then gather my own sort of thesis on what I think might happen. So again, I had these two in the other day. I didn't have this one in because I said, look, I think it's unlikely, but maybe we go down to 36,000. These two have been covered off. We're waiting to see what happens. I'm not sure we're going to push down much further. There's still a lot of people that want to buy Bitcoin. It's just big market manipulators at the moment, I believe. But look, if this whole new Omicron sort of thing kicks off and becomes even worse... Uh, then we really do need to watch out. And the S&P 500 still hasn't been doing uh, so great. And really, that is the biggest indicator of all. If the S&P 500 really starts to fall, then I guarantee you crypto is going to fall even harder. And the one saving grace it is, if the S&P 500 continues to uh, fall, then it's most likely that the Fed will step in excuse me, and bail them out. That's just the simple way it is. No guarantees. But just based on previous history, that's what they'll most likely do. And that will then, you know, hopefully filter into cryptocurrencies. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm not sure. I think this really was that one wick to just, you know, crush everyone who continued to try and go long, get rid of all the leverage. But we may go lower. Now what I want to have a do, have, have a do, do is have a look at the bigger picture because it's easy to get caught up in that day-to-day -day kind of stuff and get fudded out. Well, here's the weekly chart. Look what Bitcoin continually does. It goes up. Can we come lower? Yep. We can, as of today, come down to 27,000. 
and that would be the fair value price because that's Bitcoin basically. And this is only going back to sort of 2013. So we don't have a lot of data there. And look, there's times where we do go below. And again, this line that I've drawn in is just a rough chart. It can be moved around a little bit. You know, you can grab this uh, and move it up a little bit higher and a little bit lower. Whoops, sorry, I've really stuffed that up now. Needed to grab the end. But anyway, you get the rough idea. Here is the rough guide. So Bitcoin is overvalued at the moment, but it spends a lot of its time overvalued. It doesn't spend a lot of time undervalued. And when it does get back down to this line, that's usually the best buying opportunity you will find. So for me, if Bitcoin somehow did manage to get down to, you know, 29, sort of $30,000, I mean, that is an absolute steal, but that's not to say it can't go a little bit lower because look how low we went under here. Look how low we went under here. This is just a very rough guide. And like I said, you can, you know, I'll do that now. I'll move this a little bit. You can move this a little bit more and say, no, nah, well, maybe that's actually the bottom. So we move that there. All right, now run again. So now that kind of says really... No, the absolute best buying price is around about 24000 And like I said, that actually comes down and covers the CME gap. I'm just not sure we're going to have a double top and go into this big, long bear, period, uh, bear market. It could, but the thing is, if it happens, a lot of it is probably already happened now. Uh, in the altcoins, don't get me wrong, they'll get smashed really bad. But I just think this is more of a double top. And again, on the daily, I think we, you know, Definitely can still come down into the forty thousand dollar mark, forty five actual candle bodies, but I would really think that support will be found there, and again that is based on it just got bought up so quickly from here. All right, now what I want to do is move on, and now again go to Bitcoin on the monthly chart, and this is even more interesting. Again, now this is only going back to two thousand and fifteen, but again this gives you a rough idea and. You know, you can move this a little bit to here if you want. Again, it's give or take. I've just tried to find the best medium line. Sorry, the best medium line. And I did this chart earlier. And it just so happens that this wick completely married up with it. I, I didn't force that to happen like I just did then. But that's because I'm trying to fix it up where I already had it. It already came down and bounced off that line and pushed back up. So again, as you scale out, get out of the minutes, get out of the hourlies, even sometimes get out of the days. Go to the weeks and months, and it gives you a better indication of where Bitcoin's going. And look, it came down and retested. It's tested here before. It's tested there before. It was right here. And again, this just gives you an indication. You know, we push through thereabouts. So when I scale out. That's what makes me think, no, I don't think we're really ready for a bear market yet. We just got a little bit overheated. And on the monthly, Bitcoin came back to its fair value and it bounced nicely. So I think Bitcoin, again, considering how far it can really get right off uh, this fair value chart, it's actually around about fair value. Not quite, could go a little bit lower on the monthly and definitely on the daily, weekly, it could go a whole lot lower, but I think it gets bought up quickly. And I really think kind of $42,000 at the moment, if you can buy Bitcoin there, that's an absolute steal on a monthly basis. Again, weekly and daily could absolutely get worse. And we could have wicks like this that again, push down into something like this. Again, 34000 Again, maybe even sort of 24000 That would be quite scary. But I'd say that that won't last long. And eventually we'll find our way back up to around this kind of $40,000 level. Now, how are the other coins doing? Because Bitcoin uh, got fairly beaten around. Ethereum is actually holding really, really well. Have a look at this. It is just in a mad accumulation phase, and it really has been since sort of October. It's pumped up higher, but every time it sort of comes back down to around this $4,000 level, and look, even, you know, we can take it down to here about the $3,900. Let's just round it off. It gets bought up. Look at this big wick. Again, it got pushed right down to $3,500 basically. And boom, it just got sucked up. There was so much buying pressure that, again, the bears tried to push it down. But bears and bulls are the same people. That's also something you need to remember. They want to accumulate more. So they will do all sorts of tactics to push it down. And they're going to have you know massive uh, shorts on. 
and then they're going to have buy orders going down here as well so they accumulate cash and then they'll short it get three four or five times as much whatever it is and have buy orders set in down nice and low and so then they buy it nice and cheap and then they will let it rise again so i don't think this is uh, again a bear market i think this is just some heavy manipulation but again there's also things happening in the wider space you know omicron and the s p 500 is down but the s p 500 was being bought up as well all right this is interesting though ethereum versus bitcoin look at this this is it over its entire kind of space and look it's been ranging in and out of here for a while and have a look at this we had a w pattern and this is on the daily breakout we had another w pattern breakout and now it's pushed up got rejected from there came down and now it's broken out above so ethereum again is holding really well against bitcoin and looking like it's getting ready to actually break out against bitcoin and again we took this from over here and we pushed this up here so really our target is for ethereum to get to point one basically 0.1 so a tenth of a bitcoin and bitcoin is at around about 47,000 so it actually is kind of round about there so we'll have to wait and see exactly where that ends up but at the moment well there no sorry yeah a tenth not a not not a sort of a one a, a one hundredth yeah is what i'd say so i imagine that uh that would be very very interesting so i'm keeping a lookout for that ethereum is holding quite nicely against bitcoin all right have a look at some other coins and how they're doing. This is Luna over its entire time versus USD. Undervalued, overvalued. Undervalued, overvalued. Only just though. And look what it did. Came down and bounced almost perfectly off here. So it still is a little bit above, but it's not to say it can't go a whole lot higher. So Luna holding very well, looking quite nice. Matic. All right. I've been telling everyone about Matic and this just goes to show where we sort of might be. You know, it looks horrible against Bitcoin and certain coins, but Matic bounced off the bottom of this, has been doing this for a while. False breakout has come back down, so I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to come down maybe to around $1.66 or something like that. And this could play out for a while, but this is mass accumulation of Matic. It's been going on since basically, well, you know, you could maybe say sort of down around about here, but we want to get here because this is kind of the, roughly the average price since May. It's been higher, it's been lower, but mass accumulation. The bigger the base, usually the higher you're going to go because where have we seen this before? Look at this. Accumulation, accumulation, accumulation. Now, again, with big highs and big lows, but basically accumulation right in about here. And then boom made this huge move i really do think matic is getting set it up to do something similar again now will it be the same kind of percentage move probably not i looked at that before if it did the same kind of percentage move from here that would push it up to 270 dollars i'm not sure that matic's going to 270 dollars anytime soon but i definitely could see an easy five to ten dollar matic if not like way more in this cycle provided we are going to play out the way we think we are if we're going into a bear market then this is going to not hold it's going to be invalidated but there's a number of coins that are doing things like this they've just been in accumulation phase for such a long time engine have a look at this roughly around about here it's been accumulation where did it wick down to it touched it almost perfectly kind of the two dollar mark it's been higher it's been lower it's been higher and again, it came down and touched its fair value point because that's what we're looking at, roughly where its fair value point is. Again, you can move this line down ever so slightly. So, you know, this fully marries up with this and this This is just a guide. It doesn't have to be exact. But at the moment, engine looks like it's just been, you know, in a basically accumulation zone. Again, pumps, pump ups, fake outs, you know, really you could say it's fair value. Again, is sort of somewhere down around about here, but it touched that. And it was so bullish that it got pushed back up straight away. So again, you see that. Look at that big wick, but it just got pushed up straight away. Could it still sell off and again, come back down to around kind of the $2 mark? Absolutely. But then that is basically half price of where it's been 
not that long ago. So a lot of coins are looking like they have been in mass accumulation for a long time. Solana, it's been accumulating for months now, like only a few months, but still, all of, since basically September, this is accumulation, accumulation, it's gotten higher. I get the feeling like Solana is gonna get ready to run again. Now, is it gonna do something like this again? Probably not. I don't think it's going to have those kind of gains, but I would not be surprised if Solana didn't go from 200 to 500 to a thousand dollars. Again, another basically two to sort of five x from here. If the bull run is in still intact and we're just doing some consolidation, big, big plus. If this happens, again, everything can be invalidated by what Bitcoin does. If Bitcoin continues to go down, then yep, we're all in sort of trouble and get ready to take some profits. But if it is just, again, more shake out because of the leverage uh, and generally over leverage players in the space, then this is just accumulation. And the longer this happens, the bigger the move after it. All right, ADA, have a look at this. Again, there's a lot of FUD going on ADA and this is roughly where it's been, around that kind of dollar twenty mark, you know, maybe even sort of up to around sort of a dollar uh, sort of 50-ish is its sort of base price. Does it pump higher? Yep. Does it go lower? Yep. And again, you look at here, look where it is sitting right now at the moment. Right on its kind of fair value. So can it, or sorry, not its fair value overall. Now this line can move because things can change, but it's basically been in accumulation since basically all of this year. It's been higher, it's been lower, it came down, found that kind of price where it's been accumulating. Again, roughly $1.30, $1.20 thereabouts. Does it mean it can't go lower? No, nah, I would be surprised if it comes down and gets below 90 something cents. At the moment, again, this just looks like a mass accumulation for me and eventually it's likely to explode. Now it could explode to the downside because we go into a bear market. That's totally possible, but I'm just not sure we're there yet. Feels like accumulation. Secret network, I've been telling people about this for ages. And again, this is the trend line, roughly where it's been. It's been way above, uh, it's been below. Again, we were way up here. I have taken some profits, uh, at, and I was lucky, up around the top, and I am starting to buy more secret network as we, well, not as we speak. I've, I've already uh, bought some, but I will continue to buy some. Now, again, I'm not saying it can't come down to maybe here, $3.00. But at three dollars, I'm buying it at basically a third of the price of where it's been because it got up to nearly eleven, sort of twelve dollars. So for me, Secret Network, another one I'm keeping an eye out on. Now again, this all gets invalidated if Bitcoin absolutely tanks, then we're all in you know trouble basically, and then you got to start taking your profits and you know reorganizing things. But at the moment, Secret Network to me looks like it's undervalued considering where it's been. Again, you can see it touched it here, touched it here, uh, played around with it here, touched it perfectly there, and again, is sitting on its fair value. All right, VeChain. Again, have a look at this. It looks like really big accumulation for a lot of this year. This is where it's been, around this kind of nine cent mark. It's been higher, it's been lower, but it just gets the feeling like the volatility is kind of getting ready to die down before it's gonna make its next big move. And I'm hoping it's to the upside, but according to this, and again, you can move this around a little bit. You can say, no, nah, this is actually fair value here, or maybe fair values here. It really is up to you. I'm just trying to find places where it's got sort of the most amount of touches, and that's roughly around here. VeChain looks undervalued at the moment, and sitting on a roundabout, it's kind of fair value, for this part of the year. Not overall, not since again, we made that uh, big move after the crash of everything in March 2020. So VeChain, looking good. I'm gonna start buying some VeChain. Now again, I'm not dumping all my money in at the moment because I don't know where the market's gonna go. It absolutely could go down. We could already be in a bear market and we just don't know it yet. But I don't believe we are, so I am deploying cash appropriately. But if my thesis turns out to be wrong, I'm gonna have cash sitting on the side. I will simply cash out of some of my things. I'm still well in profit, excuse me, on a number of coins and the coins that I'm not, excuse me again, got the hiccups there, that I'm not in profit in, 
you know, I can either leave them sit there or I can just sort of cut my losses. And I'll probably cut my losses, uh, to be honest, if I think we really are going into a bear market. And my losses would be very, very small in comparison because I scale into things. I don't just chuck everything at something at the same time, except for over in here. I got my cash and I just knew this was a something unsort of heard of and unseen before. And so I was buying in around these prices. Now this was in crypto in general. So there would have to be something truly horrible for again, my entire crypto portfolio to basically end up back down here where I started. Not saying it couldn't happen, I just think it's unlikely. And again, that's why when you see things like this, you know, you see a high and all of a sudden it's coming back and retesting some old places of support and resistance probably a good buy because again if you bought it here you're buying it at five cents and it's currently sitting at around kind of nine cents it dipped down below but that's still a 2x you've doubled your money and that's not to say it can't go a whole lot higher but again the reverse side is it could go lower all right dot another one i want to have a look at this is dot over its entire sort of lifespan going back from uh there we go 19th of august uh 2020 again touch point here played around here, came back up. This really is a kind of support line at the moment, but also, so it's under its fair value at the moment, but have a look at this. Look where it's sitting. It's priced now of $28. It's been around here before. This again looks like a, a lot of accumulation. It's been higher, it's been lower, but it is basically sitting around that kind of 28, 27, you know, 26 to $30 level. I'm buying at the moment. Again, not throwing the kitchen sink, but there is a number, of, and all of these projects that are, I have gone over, I believe are really good projects and have long-term value. That is my personal opinion, never financial advice. I've been wrong before. I will be wrong again. I can absolutely assure you of that. Hence why I don't put all my sort of eggs in the one basket, as they say. I've spread it around. I'm heavy into crypto. I think it's the best asset class out there, but I do own some stocks. I do plan on buying some property. I will diversify. But crypto is the place for the biggest gains, but it's also the place for the biggest losses if you haven't been able to look at the charts and understand where we are in you know, terms of cycles. Because buying here really, really hurts. Because you're unlikely to be able to buy here, sit through this to get back to here. Again, you, know, you were buying at $48, it's you know, now sitting under sort of $30, it's almost half price. You probably would have panic sold somewhere in here. And so that's what really hurts people. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is scary times. We could be in a bear market. It's definitely possible. I don't think we are, hence why I am buying this dip. But I'm not throwing all my money at it. I wouldn't ever throw all my money unless it was something, again, truly crazy. Like I said, with, you know, we go back to that Bitcoin chart where it just fell super, you know, super low. So we're where we are. Basically, what was it? January, February, here, in here. This is where I knew something just was odd. And this is on the monthly, so it doesn't show up as well. But this was, again, the, you know, the virus kind of break. I just knew it was a time. Now, I didn't get in here, and I certainly didn't manage to get in way down here. I was not doing that. I was getting in more about here, but I just knew that it was the right time. And so I threw a lot at it, but not everything. I scaled in. I wish I had have thrown everything in right about here because I kind of scaled in over about a month or two with the bulk of my funds. And then I've just been dollar cost averaging since. But again, I have seen these kinds of you know gains and you can do this as well. But just be careful that you're not getting in here because if you are, and again, that's not to say you can't still make money. It just takes a long time to get back to there you might have to wait years. So come in, find good projects, understand timings, uh, you know, understand charts and cycles and things like that, and then act accordingly. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment, but this is when I like to buy. I wanna buy when everybody else is freaking out and doesn't want any of it and things are at massive discounts because once they finally go back up, um, that's the good projects, bad ones won't, and I've had some bad ones that haven't, but the good ones, they will make up the gains, and I don't believe in that catching a falling knife sort of thing. I'm not looking to jump into things until they're really 30, 40, 50% discount. I will scale into them, but I won't really deploy 
large amounts of money until we're at about those 50% gains. We have had a near 50% retracement. Again, not to say we can't go lower, hence why I'm just kind of scaling in, but from that 50% uh, discount on anything that I think is a good project, that's when I will more heavily invest because I don't know when the bottom is and we're probably closer to the bottom from 50% than we are from, you know, 70 uh, or sort of 60 percent and that's to the upside not to the downside is what I mean so if we've only retraced you know 30 percent then I'm going to scale into it if we are now at 50 percent from all-time highs and starting to go lower I'm much more aggressive because I don't mind uh, the downside from there because it can still be significant but once it starts to pump back up, that's when you're really going to see those explosive gains. Hopefully I haven't confused everyone there. I've sort of lost uh, my own train of thought there a little bit, but basically I'm buying at the moment and I will continue to buy, not throwing everything, but I will continue to buy until whatever bottom uh, we find, because once we go back up, the gains will be all that much sweeter. All right, stay safe, be kind to one another, and I'll see you next time.